today as we celebrate this great gift of the season of Advent. Advent is one of those extraordinary seasons when the readings just kind of jump out at you. And in fact, uh, I used a word the other day that somebody liked, they're delicious, you know. They're like the delicious things we eat as we anticipate the coming of Christmas, like lots of real good cookies and, you know, fatty stuff. And, you know, you start at Thanksgiving and just kind of eat your way through Christmas. We're, we're living in this deliciousness that, sa that we savor. We ta it tastes so good, but sometimes if we let it, it may corrupt our digestive system and then we get kind of sick, you know? So we want to make sure that we balance this in the season of Advent. It's a season when we anticipate the beginning of a new cycle of life through transformation. Now, some of you are probably as old as I am and maybe even a little bit older, but I doubt it. But you may remember uh, there's something called a newspaper. And I still get it every morning, you know, and I read the obituaries, which you do, you know, in my line of work. And I also read the comics. And there was a comic this past weekend that really struck me. It's kind of profound. It was, it's a story about this mom and dad and these children, but there's this baby by the name of Trixie who never seems to grow up. You know, Trixie's been a baby since they started making the comics. Well, anyway, the mother in the comic strip is really excited and she goes to the baby and she puts something down in front of the baby and the baby's looking at it. And mom says, now Trixie, you've got your own telephone. And the baby looks at this thing and she said, well, let me tell you about the thing. It had a dial and a receiver. And she said, I've never, and the baby's thinking, I don't, it's not like any telephone I've ever seen, you know? I mean, I'm old enough to remember when you go to your relatives in the country, they didn't even have a dial on their phone, right? You picked it up and it said, number please. Transformation, something that was so commonplace for us for so long, now has been translated and transformed into this little thing that we cannot do without, sometimes too much. In fact, I used mine to talk to me this morning to get here because I didn't know where this was. You know, it's a turn right. You know, and I did. It's been transformed. The season of Advent is not about penance. It's about transformation. It's about allowing God to take us from one place to another. Allowing God's grace to work in us to make us people who are more aware of the availability of God's grace and of God's grace freely moving through our community. All of the readings in this season are, are aimed that way. And if you're fortunate enough to be able to go to Mass every day, super, but most of us can't. Uh, but you can read the readings online, on your phone, you know. You can do that. And they all are leading us along this path of transformation. Think about the readings we heard today, beautifully read. Thank you for the shoot shall sprout from the stump. That's, that's a mouthful. Now think about that image. Now a stump is something that's left over. It's there. Someone, for greedy reasons, or someone because they didn't like the tree, cut something alive down. And if you've ever had to have a stump removed, you know how expensive it is to get rid of. Because they just don't want to go away. The roots are like, you know, everywhere. But this stump is different. It's not just there to sit down on, or put a statue of the Blessed Mother on, or whatever. It's there to do something remarkable. From that symbol of lack of exploitation comes a shoot. And that alliteration, a shoot shall sprout from the stump. Not just from the tree roots, from the stump. Something that is dead is being transformed into something that gives life. Sound familiar? Isn't that the Christian message? Giving life not only so that it can grow into another kind of tree thing, but it can change the way everything is. That reading continues by saying, you know, lion and the lamb shall lie down. The child shall play with the snakes. You know, it's kind of a weird image. I mean, it's, it's a weird image. But it's that something that was dead, maybe you or me, because of our anger or our lack of hope or our cynicism, can give life again if we allow God to work in us. Nice stuff, you know? There's hope for us all. Isn't that great? We are not just dead. We are not just wretched. We are not vessels of carnal wealth. We are people who have life and must give life from death. That's the Christian message, I think. Then you get John the Baptist. Don't you love John the Baptist? What a whack job he was, you know? 
Now, you know, look at the scriptures with humor because they're written to make a point. You know, they're not, oh, Pilate, John the Baptist. You know, John is this person who wears really bad clothes, okay? He doesn't particularly have a good diet. He's eating locusts and wild honey, Ugh. you know, bugs and stuff that leaks from a tree, you know. And, and, and he has this fanatic need to scream at people. To scream at the Pharisees and the Sadducees. It's, repent, repent, change your ways, you hypocrites. Oh, oh. And he's doing it in polluted water. He's throwing out water on people coming out of the sewer. They didn't have sewers. They had just, everything went into the river. So there it was. Repent, repent, you know. He'd be in Shepherd Pratt today, maybe. You know, who knows? I'm not making fun of St. John the Baptist. I'm simply saying this is how it is in the stories, in the Gospels. He was not someone to be pushed aside. And you know who wanted to go see him? Not just the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Who went down to the river? Jesus. Now, Jesus is, you know, we don't know much about what Jesus' backstory was. But we presume it wasn't as inflammatory as John the Baptist. Jesus is intrigued by this guy. What is he saying? What, 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 what insight does he have? All that theatrical stuff he's doing and screaming at people and pouring water on people. Well, Jesus went down to the river and he submitted himself to the baptism of John. And then what happened? Remember the story? What happened after Jesus was baptized? Say it. Depends on which gospel you read. The sky opens up and the doves speak and the voice from heaven comes down and says, this is my beloved son. Jesus is transformed by his engagement with John the Baptist. And then what does he do? Immediately, he turns towards Jerusalem, his fate. Even Jesus in the gospel, and we, all have, we have John in all four gospels. Even Jesus is transformed by his submission to the will of God. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what we are preparing for. As you know, I'm not telling you anything you don't know. I'm simply hoping to remind all of us of the fact that from nothing comes something. From our lack comes our hope. And from desperation, sometimes comes God's promise. So as we journey from this, from this, through this season of Advent, we watch those candles burn down. And so you see one of them's farther down than the other. Next weekend, we have Gaudete Sunday. That's the pink Sunday, or the rose Sunday. You know, that's, again, a little rejoicing, of course, because we are rejoicing. But we're living in hope. May we be people of the Advent, no matter what our age is. And remember that stump. And remember that John the Baptist. And do what we can to invite the world to be transformed.